It says it allures those through the lust of the flesh. Listen to it. Through much wanting this, those that were clean, they were free. And that's what I want to tell you on this Monday or whenever you're watching this, to stay free. If God freed you with the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty. Stay free. Don't go back into bondage. It says those that were clean escaped from them who live in error while they promised them liberty. Eat up Mondays. Hey, what's going on, family? You guys already know what day it is. It is the day after Sunday. Welcome to another Eat Up Mondays. Listen, I don't know about you guys, but I am ready to dig into this meal. I pray that you guys brought your appetite. I brought mine. So without further ado, guys, let's dig in. Listen, today I want to come from uh, I wouldn't call it a familiar passage of scripture, but I'm sure many of us may have heard uh, this scripture if you've ever went to church or listened to church services or, or obviously read the Bible for yourself. But I think it speaks to a lot of things that we see in our lives, that we see in other people's lives. Um, and when you read the scripture, um, it sheds a lot of light on different things that many of us have been through and the different things that we've seen other people go through, especially when it comes to spirituality, especially when it comes to having a relationship with the Lord, right? And I want to come out of Matthew chapter 12, uh, verses 43 through 45. And a lot of times we know we hear people talk about spirits and demons and all of these different things, but I want you guys to see what it says here, because I believe that the scripture is going to enlighten us and encourage us, um, and it is very powerful. Uh, the scripture reads as follows. It says, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest and findeth none. So it says, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, it walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and it findeth none. Then he saith, talking about the spirit, I will return into my house. Listen to what it says. I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. That's very key there. But let's go to this next verse before we before we dig into that. Verse 45 says, Then goeth he, after he finds it empty, swept, and garnished, then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. And this was Jesus talking here. But listen to what it says. It says, when it finds that house, that vessel, that person, right? Empty, swept, and garnished, that it goes and gets seven other spirits more wicked than himself. Now let's look at that verse 44 and let's look at these, these uh, words. It says empty, right? We all know what empty is. It says swept. We pretty much know what it is to sweep something, but that word garnished there, right? Listen to what it says. It says to adorn or to decorate. The word adorn means to make more pleasing or attractive. So when this particular spirit comes back to what it called its house or what used to be its home, when it comes and it finds that it is pleasing or attractive to him to himself, then it goes and gets seven other spirits more worse than itself. So the question is how and and why does it see this individual uh, spirit or not spirit, but this individual's inside uh, pleasing and attractive? And the reason is because it finds it empty of what? Empty of the spirit of God, empty of a relationship with God, right? Because if this spirit was to come back and it finds us, you know, abiding in the Lord, one with the Lord, the spirit of abiding in us, how many know it can't go and get anything? thing to bring back, let alone come in and, 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 and into that same house, you know, itself, right? Where, where it once was. And guess what? Many of us, we've been in places where 
before we met the Lord, we dealt with these types of spirit, right? When we made our, 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 our declaration, when we said, listen, we made our confession that, listen, Jesus Christ is Lord. I'm surrendering to him. Guess what? He got rid of all those things, right? Those spirits could no longer live there when the Holy Spirit came in to us, sealed us and resided in us. But that's the key that we have to make sure that we are keeping that connection with the Lord, right? That we are not allowing ourselves to go outside of the word and do things contrary to the word. But I want to read something to you, just confirmation of what it is that we're talking about. Listen to what John chapter 14, verses 22 through 23 says. And this is Jesus talking about the Holy Spirit. This whole particular chapter talks on the Holy Spirit. It says, Judas saith unto him, not Iscariot, Lord. How is it that thou wilt manifest yourself or thyself unto us and not unto the world? Because Jesus says, listen, I'm going to manifest myself to you, but not on, but not unto the world. So he asked, well, how are you going to be able to do that? Because it will be able to see you, then everybody else will be able to see you. But listen to what Jesus goes on to say. Jesus answered and said unto him, if a man love me, what will he do, Lord? He will keep my words. That is very important. He will keep my words and my father will love him. And here it is. And he will, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. That word abode means home. And how does the father and the son make their home with us? It is through the Holy Spirit. So he says, listen, if this individual truly loves me, they're going to keep my words, right? They're not going to listen to any other words. They're not going to be influenced by any other words. And a lot of times that's how it is that we get off track, right? By listening to other people, by listening to ourselves, to our flesh. And it is very important that once we get free, guys, that we stay free. Because guess what? If we allow this spirit that quote unquote calls us, us, our, our inner man, it's home. And we allow that spirit to come back and find our inner man empty, swept and garnished. Listen, the Bible says that that latter state is going to be worse for us. So I'm here to encourage you. Listen, there's no time to play around, right? There's never been a time to play around. You know, we always talk about the end of the world and the Lord returning. We believe in all those things and we know that the Lord is returning. But one thing that sometimes we never talk about is that tomorrow could be that return for us, meaning tomorrow could be our last day on this earth, right? So we shouldn't be getting ready or getting serious just because of the times and the things that we see that's going on and how crazy things are getting. No, we should always be on alert. We shall always be on point. We shall always be abiding in the Lord and striving not to willfully sin and go against his word, right? Because we don't know if today could be our last day. So it's not just about because these are the end times. It's always been this way, right? It's always been important for us to be uh, super intentional on how we live for the Lord. Because if you are not careful, you will find your, yourself, and we've seen this, right? I know many of us can name people that we felt was on fire for God. All they talked about was the Lord, the Lord this, the Lord that. And now some of them you may talk to, it's almost as if they, they don't even believe in the Lord, as if the Lord didn't do the things that they confessed that he did for them and that we saw that he did for them, right? And a lot of times what it is is Somewhere along the line, they got off course. They started doing something. They didn't have any business. And once that spirit got a hold of them or and, and they got caught back up into that bondage, it was super hard to come out of it. I want to read one more scripture with you guys, because remember what Jesus says. He says, listen, if you love me, you will keep my words. We talk on this channel all the time about whose information are you dressed in. Information is super powerful. Information is the key of the world. And that's why you got to be careful on whose information you are dressed in. Whose information are you living by, right? Because this is how many people get pulled off track. And social media, um, the internet, it didn't help it none. Yes, it can be used for good things. Look, we're talking about the Lord on here now on YouTube, Facebook, wherever you're listening, TikTok, wherever. So it can be used for some good, but unfortunately a high percentage of it has caused many of people, many people to wreck their lives. But listen to what second Peter chapter two, verses 18 
And we'll read down to the 22nd verse. I only was going to read to the 20th verse, but we'll read all the way to 22. But this particular chapter was talking about false teachers, right? Which we have to be careful of. But I think it also applies to just general, right? Just in general, the people that we listen to that we have to be very careful of. But listen to what it says, speaking on these false teachers. And, and, and just imagine this also being those that are not even in the church, right? It says, for when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantingness. This is why we have to be careful on our desires, our fleshly desires, the things that we desire and want. We have to be very careful that we keep those things in perspective and that we learn how to live a life of contentment. It doesn't mean, see, this is the thing that people struggle with. They think when you start talking about contentment and being content, and that's why we don't hear a lot of messages on it, people feel like that's putting a ceiling on your life. It is not. To be content in the Lord is saying, listen, you've done enough for me. If you don't do anything else, I am grateful and I am thankful. That doesn't mean that God isn't going to do anything else, but people, they get scared when you start using that word contentment. But this is why you have to learn how to be content. Like, like uh, uh, Paul said, and in, in no matter what state you are, a bound or a base, you need to learn whether you're high or low, how to be content. Because if you don't, through your lust, through your desire, you can be pulled off track. Listen what he says. He says, for when they speak great swelling words, we see it in church all the time. Get ready. God wants you, you on a higher level, all of that type of talk. It gets people off track and it gets people on a path that God didn't even set them on. God didn't even tell them to go down in, in that direction, but because they're, be, be, but because they have a lust of the flesh and they want all of these things, those words sound good, but they're just great swelling words of vanity, right? They're words that don't mean anything. And it says that by these words and through your, your lust of the flesh and through your much wantingness, those that were clean escape from them who live in error. It says it allures those through the lust of the flesh. Listen to it. Through much wanting this, those that were clean, they were free. And that's what I want to tell you on this Monday or whenever you're watching this to stay free. If God freed you with the spirit of the Lord as there is liberty, stay free. Don't go back into bondage. It says those that were clean escape from them who live in error while they promise them liberty. I just said that, right? Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is true liberty. But it says, wow, they promised them liberty. And it's not only these false teachers that promise you liberty, right? The internet, people on the internet, they promise all of these different things. And a lot of times you'll get caught up in these things and you'll find out that it is nothing but bondage. It says, while they promised them liberty, they themselves, how can you promise me liberty when you yourself is a servant of corruption. It's impossible for them to promise us, us liberty when they are servants of corruption themselves. For of whom a man is overcome, the thing that overcomes you, the thing that overcame them, of the same as he brought unto bondage or brought in bondage. The thing that overcame you, the thing that you are submitted to, that is the thing that you are going to be in bondage to, right? And that's where I really wanted to stop. And I'll read the rest in a second, but I wanted to encourage you guys, listen, stay free. Stop playing around with certain things. Stop, you know, dibbling and dabbling. And when, when you're feeling down and when you're going through, you know, you feel like doing the thing that made you feel better in the past, but it was the thing that brought you into bondage. If we remember the children of Israel, God brought them out of Egypt. And when things started to get a little hard, when they started to hear the footsteps of fear, when they started to get a little hungry in the wilderness, what did they say? We was better off back in Egypt. Really? Where you were slaves at, it doesn't make sense. But a lot of times when we go through and things are not happening for us right away, we tend to go back to those things that so easily beset us. But let's read the rest of these scriptures and we'll close out. It says, for if they, and it's talking about these false teachers, for if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world, they, they had escaped, they were free through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than in the beginning. So what it is saying is like, listen, they escaped 
the corruption of the world, right? They overcame the world, but because, you know, because they wanted to dibble and dabble on things and scheme and fill their bellies and be concerned about all of the things here in this world, they were brought back into bondage. And it says when we allow that to happen, because it's not just talking to them right here, right? When we allow ourselves to be entangled in those old things therein and overcome the latter end is going to be worse for us than the beginning. The stuff that we went through before we became free is going to be nothing. What what we will go through now, if we go back to these old things, will be nothing compared to what we went through in the past. If you thought coming out of the world and coming out of that sin was hard that first time around, just imagine the second time, because now the devil has another opportunity to grab hold of you and keep you. And it's only going to take the grace of God. And some of you had this testimony to come out of that, but some of you need to be honest and be true with people about what it really took for you to come out of it. And the things that you went through to have to come back to the Lord. I've met people that was saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, doing well, and and went back into the world and came back maimed, messed up, you know, mind not totally right. Like you got to be super careful. When you are free, you need to stay free. Verse 21 says, for it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness. It says, listen, it would have been better that if they didn't even know the way of righteousness, then after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit and the soul that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. We don't want to be these individuals that are dogs that have turned to their old vomit, right? Like when when God has freed us, we want to stay free. Are we always going to make the right decisions or do the right things? No, but we know what the scriptures is talking about. When we are doing those intentional things, when the Holy Spirit is saying, don't do that, you know, but we're being intentional. We're not talking about mistakes and messing up. We're talking about those intentional sins, right? Like, like purposely, like, listen, I'm going to go here and, and it's going to take you time to get there too, right? Like an hour, half an hour, like you've already planned this thing. I'm going to go here. I'm going to do this X, Y, and Z. It's not no mistake. Like, oops, oh, I messed up. Uh, you know, I said the wrong thing. I, I made a mistake because it, it was none of that. It's that intentional like, listen, this is what I've purposed myself to do. And this is what I'm going to do. And guess what? We know that. God is not going to play with that. Yes, sometimes we mess up. Yes, sometimes we slip up and we're not even condoning that. So understand we're not condoning that either, right? Because we still need to ask God to help in those areas and to deliver us in those areas. But when you're being intentional and you're following behind certain individuals and you know something is not right about what they're doing, then you are going to be held accountable for that. It says that, listen, it would have been better for you not to have known the way, talking to these false teachers, but to us as well, right? It would have been better for you not to, to it would have been better for you not to have known the way of righteousness than to have uh, ever known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto us, amen? So I just wanted to encourage you, um, you know, stay free, don't allow anything that's going on in your life, convince you to go back to the thing that you used to do, because guess what? It's going to be super hard to come out of it. I've seen it. I've been through it. And that's why I'm here to encourage you to let you know that it's not worth it. But know that I love you guys. And until the next time we share a beautiful spiritual meal together, Shalom.